Hello, everybody. Um, I want to call to order um, our TSAC meeting for Friday the 13th, 2023. Um, if we want to start with the attendance, um, we can start here. William Coates, President. Reeve Varco here. Alejandro Casillas here. Michael Warner here. Thomas Cheney here. Paul Nelson, present. Denny Palacios, present. Matthew Rathbun present. And I think Naomi will be just a couple minutes late. Gabe um, present. Oh, sorry. And then we have Kristen as well. Oh, so Kristen wrote in the chat that um, she is present as well. Um, would someone want to read the mission statement? Paul? Thank you, Matt. Our mission is to support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Thank you, Paul. Um, and before we jump to approving the agenda, I want to make a quick comment. Um, I want to address what occurred in last week's meeting and subsequent discussion with the press. Um, there was a bill that was brought to the meeting last week regarding the food pantry that became very contentious within the meeting. As a point of order, I would like to address that I believe what I believe to be the root cause of what occurred during last week's meeting. There was a rule under Section 3 of our Constitution that requires all bills introduced to be made available to the council at least 24 hours prior to the meeting that was not followed. I feel that the purpose of this rule within our Constitution is to allow council members to properly consider a bill in full. This caused significant fusion and discontent in the meeting. With that, I would like to call to order that all votes on the food pantry bill last week be summarily rejected as the rules of our Constitution were not followed. If any member would like to address this bill or any other bill, it is essential to give your fellow council members appropriate time to understand the bill prior to the meeting so discussion can be more effective and voting be valid. Point of clarification, the bill was sent three weeks prior to that meeting, and the students should know that. There was one amendment offered by the authors of that resolution, which is well within our capability under our bylaws. Jenny? Yes, it was. Um, however, we did not vote on the amendments to the bill. It was just the amendments were just presented. It was here is what is going on. It was it was said that we are making these changes um, and we also had to scratch something because there was a confusion with the amount of money. Um, yeah. Point of clarification is under our rights as authors of this resolution to offer amendments at the table. And that is clearly uh, present in our bylaws. I'd encourage you all to read them. All right. Um, we will take that in consideration. Um, so if we can move on uh, to approve the agenda. Um, I, I, I would like an agenda. I'm sorry, Matt. All right. Go okay. ahead. Keep and then well, or Mike, sorry. Um, I would like to make a, 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 an amendment to the agenda. I mean, sorry. Yeah, um, I was busy and unfortunately failed to put uh, my uh, community hour survey 24 hours before. So I am taking or tabling my item about the community survey, community hour survey, and I will talk about it next week. Thank you. Thank you, Denny. Um, Mike. Um, I would like to move my board of trustees update till after the advisors update, if that's not a problem. Is that agreeable with everybody? All right. Point of clarification, if that's all right, chairs. Uh, the group norms on item D, um, was that what you were just talking about? Or do we have other plans there? Um, in what regards? Item D under housekeeping. I just was curious about clarification on like, or you want us to go to the group norms? I'm curious if what you were discussing just prior to the approval was the group norms section and or what a, the purpose of this group norms element of the housekeeping section is going to be. And it looks like John is trying to call in the wrong place. Sorry. Um, yeah, one of us should message John and suggest that he join by the calendar in the Teams app. That'll, yes. that'll get directed to the right meeting. You mind doing that, Kenny? Thank you. Um, I wanted to 
bring up this statement before we approve the agenda, um, just so it sets the precedent that we are following our constitution within the 24 hour rule of submitting uh, resolutions and bills. So it was not part of the group norms. Um, so other than that, do we want to approve the agenda for this week? I'm still just somewhat curious. What are we doing in that group norm section? If you could just answer that question, if that's OK. Yes, Danny. I believe it's just uh, it has been failed to be removed. We did this a couple of weeks ago and we just needed to remove it out of the agenda. I would second a motion to remove it from the agenda if you'd offer that as a motion. I don't think we should have it in the agenda. We're at the point where we're approving it. I'm well within my right to ask about items on it and to ask that they be removed. Please respect me. Yes. Do you want to second that, Reed? Are you seconding Paul's motion, Reed? Yes, sure. All right, um, we'll remove that from the agenda. Um, any other concerns with the agenda today? All right, then we'll move on to our board and committee announcements. Um, Mike requested Board of Trustees to be after the advisor updates. So if we can go to SACAB with Gabe and Kristen. Awesome. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. OK, lovely. OK, cool. So uh, with SACAB, we, we have our next meeting next Tuesday. Um, but this last Tuesday, we had a special meeting uh, to, to talk about um, decorating the new Zig Ziggy's Hub, right? So now Tivoli 230, I think 230, has been renamed uh, to Ziggy's Hub. Um, we're, we're hopefully planning like a little, you know, like open house type thing, you know, to, to, to get that word out that, that this is a student space and all that fun stuff. Um, and so more on that will come soon. Uh, so I'm thinking of like, there's anything else within, my updates for SACAB. Um, oh, oh yeah, and then just like as a reminder, uh, for next Wednesday, um, there's three people, uh, to three to, to like four people to come with us to uh, to the Sasaki uh, presentation for our area and how that's going to be envisioned. Um, I think in, in, in our last meeting, Will volunteered to go, if that's still possible. Just please let me know. Uh, I will also put this again in the chat, um, in, in our group chat later on, uh, to make sure that I have the people. So yeah, that's all I have. I don't know what. Um, if Kristen has anything else, Kristen is on a plane, so I think. Okay, cool. Never mind. Okay, awesome. All right. So with that, if we want to go to the Judiciary Committee with Ree. So we finish our norms and how this committee is going to operate. I have no update. Thank you, Ree. Um, budget committee. Um, just a quick update. So the spreadsheet is all up to date. So if you all want to check out how many funds you have um, left over in your um, budget and um, we still don't have a finalized number on the budget. We still are expecting a, a cut in the future. So what we have right now, it's a, a rough estimate what we're working with. And I'm assuming there's no timeline um, you're aware of, of when we're going to find that out? Uh, no, not yet, All but right. I'm assuming hopefully within the next month we should All right. hopefully have it. Appreciate it. Oh, Dr. Brown. Can I just respond, Alejandro, um, in what he just said? Mm -hmm. We don't have a timeline, but what I would like to propose, Alejandro, is that we have a separate meeting with our fiscal manager um, within Student Affairs to go over the TSEC budget and to um, either with you or the entire budget committee to just make sure we're all on the same page. I appreciate your comment, Dr. Brown. Um, and then it goes to me with or the PR committee. Um, so the PR committee, we are still um, finalizing graphics for the um, Kroger program to present to students. 
and faculty um, to where they can sign up for, then go in their King Supers app and allocate their, whenever they swipe their King Supers card, um, it'll have money donated to a charity of their choice, which Rowdy's Corner is a piece of that, is a program within that. Um, so we're gonna encourage students and staff to uh, sign up for that. Um, and depending on a bill that we have, um, that we tabled last week, that we want to present today on tabling, um, this next week, hopefully we'll be planning some tabling events. And then that includes for me, um, Sustainability Committee. Paul? We did not meet this week. I have nothing to report. Okay. And then Mike? I have some questions. Um, so the Sustainability Committee has been active for almost two months now. Um, and I mean, I'm not sure what I've seen out of it so far. Um, what are your all's future plans for the committee? Because I know you guys have a budget, and I know you guys have I've heard a lot of the same thing the past few weeks. Maybe Naomi can clear this up or something. What is the current goals of the state of the committee? I have no comment on Michael's like uh, bailed attack here. Yeah, I'm just asking what the sustainability committee has been doing. I don't believe you have a genuine curiosity about that. I'd be happy to tell you about some of our plans. I've communicated them in previous meetings. Um, they're in the meeting minutes and our recordings. Um, because we didn't meet this week, I don't have anything new to offer you, and I I reject that we're not advocating. So uh, there's an I'm underlying order. I don't question. think I'm there's any answer. statement of you the sustainability cannot doing anything. He was just asking for clarification. Yeah, I don't believe that's the case. All right. So All right. nothing. All right. Um, when would you be able to give it us an update? Because assume, well, seeing that you do have a budget, we need to know whether if you're going to be using those funds or not. So we can distribute those funds because um, if you're not going to end up using them, then it can obviously go to use for something better. So you will likely uh, see an update the next time we meet. And so wait till next Friday and you'll likely hear something. See, I'm not the only person on the committee. Um, there's We have two others, two other members. And so I'd ask that we... Um, you know, this is a broad ask of the sustainability committee. Um, and honestly, uh, I agree, you know, uh, to, to critically assess the amount of funds given to the sustainability committee because there's other ways we can get like, grants and things like that. So I guess I go back to my question. When would you be able to give us an update? I believe I answered your question. I believe Paul referenced uh, potentially next Friday after they meet. Um, any open floor announcements? Paul? Thank you, Chair. Colleagues and members of the Student Advocacy Council, we sit here as elected representatives of our student body with a sacred duty to uphold the principles of governance, transparency, and most importantly, the welfare of the students we represent and who elected us. I urge you to set aside the personal biases and consider the gravity of the situation we find ourselves in. Over the last couple months, Thomas Cheney and I have worked diligently on CR 236 a resolution designed to combat food insecurity that affects a staggering one third of our student population. This is not a pet project. This is a call to action to address a crisis within our community. Unfortunately, this resolution has been repeatedly sidetracked and eventually killed undemocratically. To begin with, our advisor Armando Rijo took it upon himself to deprioritize our resolution, placing it at the end of a lengthy norms training session, which incidentally never addressed the core issues it claimed to mean to resolve. Uh, let me be clear. This act is not just a procedural violation, it's a derailment of our democratic process. Uh, the rules outlined in our constitution and by Robert's rules of orders are not suggestions, they are requirements that assure fairness and transparency in student governance. I wanna to bring to your attention another serious matter of inconsistency and favoritism. Last year, when we were threatened with, with lawsuits, we were informed that student counselors would not be provided legal counsel in the case of a lawsuit against the student government. And yet, in a stunning reversal, student counselors Michael Warner and William Coates have been granted the services of the university's legal counsel. This is not merely a procedural inconsistency, it is a blatant violation of our governance norms and a direct attempt to silence the voice of the student body who are exercising their democratic right to recall elected officials. Now, let's address the proverbial elephant in the room here, the rumors of the budget cuts. Uh, despite multiple requests for clarity, we remain uninformed. Dr. Barone has confirmed that, these, that this budget was reduced by a mere $1,000 this year. This is one of the numbers I've heard. Uh, yet, these rumors have been leveraged to stall essential projects, including this resolution to feed the students. And yet, um, notably, Rowdy's Food Pantry hasn't seen a cent of funding from our student government this year. 
a point that directly conflicts with the very reason for our student, student council's existence, advocacy and welfare. Now, let's talk about the contentious vote that took place during our last meeting. The motion to reconsider was instigated by William Coates, formalized by Denny Palacios and seconded by Michael Warner. It is our interpretation that Denny would not have made that motion without input from Will, and we are not aiming to retaliate against the chair for the act of facilitating a meeting. Uh, this sequence of events not only conflicts with Robert's rules of order, but it also undermines the spirit of democratic governance that we are obligated to maintain. I stand before you not as an antagonist, but as a fellow counselor deeply concerned about the erosion of our democratic principles. To that end, I present a petition by, signed by over 241 students who demand the recall of Michael Warner and William Coates. This petition is not a vendetta. It is a desperate call for the reinstatement of democratic norms. Lastly, I must touch upon last year's food pantry resolution, which was supposed to allocate more than $15,000 to students to address food insecurity. This was passed by our student government. Advisors intervened to nullify this resolution, stating that the student government should not be funding such initiatives. This action did not just violate the explicitly stated business passed by this elected body, it obliterated the very foundation of student governance. Why should we believe that the that the today's food pantry compromise will be upheld. I, I don't think that's a reasonable belief. How, how do we know that it won't be killed too? So I ask you, if we can't uphold the basic tenets of democracy, what are we doing here? If we let personal interests or external influences guide our actions, are we not failing the students who elected us? Our role isn't just administrative, it is moral, it is ethical, and above all, it is democratic. And so I implore each of you to seriously consider the ramifications of your decisions, both past and future, on the welfare of our student body and the integrity of this council. In light of the myriad injustices and violations that we presented today, Thomas Cheney and I find ourselves in an untenable position. As of this moment, we are excusing ourselves from this meeting and any subsequent meetings until this council takes meaningful steps to restore its commitment to our norms, our bylaws, student voice, and most critically, our democratic principles. We cannot, in good conscience, participate in a system that has proven to be fundamentally flawed and divergent from the principles it purports to uphold. Only the reestablishment of these core tenets, only upon the reestablishment of these core tenets, will we consider our return to this council. Our absence, it is not a retreat. Don't get it twisted. It is an act of resistance against the corrosion of the democratic fabric of the student government. Until we witness these concrete changes, our seats will remain empty as a solemn reminder of the work that still needs to be done. And we're going to go out there and do it. Thank you. Here's the petitions. I'd like to make a motion, Chair, and this could be debated as well. I think because we do practice restorative justice here, Mm -hmm. um, I motion that we create an accountability committee to investigate what happened last week and investigate the validity of this petition. Mm -hmm. We do. Well, well. Um, per our new or attempts to create an accountability mm -hmm. committee, I would like for none of us to be involved in this committee. I would like the university to do its dues and investigate as this affects the university more than it does us, and this is how it looks. Um, I will. I'll, I will. I'll come back. I'll come back. She said. Um, I. I mean, we have a judiciary committee specifically for things like this. So if we have like an issue, I mean, why don't we just go to them? Okay. Leave them on. So Denny? Th the plan of reorganizing this committee is with the intent that we work with restorative justice, and I only act as a liaison to us. And that way it keeps us out of this decision making and it is more objective and fair. Mike? Yes. So what this petition is, is going over that process and going straight through to retaliation. That's what that is. That's what ultimately that is. I mean, it's using, I mean, uninformed students. I mean, they're lying to students, Lily. The petition, how they got the signatures? It, they said we and Will, me and Will, don't support the food pantry to students literally walking into the food pantry. Like, we literally wrote, we literally have a bill this week to do it. And the fact that they didn't want to compromise on any of these, I mean, any of our, of our amendments, I mean, it's, it's shameful. I mean, it's shameful. It's quite shameful the action they did there. And I mean, it's worth investigating for sure. Right. Danny? Okay, I was not planning to give a statement today. Here we go. When you 
chose me as chair. Naomi very uh, candidly asked me, how are you going to somehow um, push back on the colonial uh, aspects of the legality? And, uh, um, and I told you I would compromise. And I did, I've been doing what I can to uphold due process. What I will not stand for and what I will not compromise is with the destruction that this is causing. That is colonial, that is settler. I don't wanna hear about retaliation anymore. That is shameful. Um, the, like the earliest pact or contract was owned by indigenous people and there is like no pact and there is no contract with what is happening right now. We really need to start looking at ourselves and at each other and what we're doing. That I will not compromise on. I have Gabe first. Oh, Gabe. Gabe? Awesome. I have a statement too. Can I, can I give it? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. As a Latino student here at MC Denver, I find it absolutely appalling and disgusting that two Latino men on this council are being accused of doing illegal activities and committing crimes. Historically, us, the Latino, Latine, Latina community, have been accused of being criminal. Oh. Okay, wait, are y'all hearing that? Okay, cool, sorry. Uh, historically, us, the Latino, Latina community, have been accused of being criminals, have been accused of breaking laws, of being labeled as the bad people, of being seen as the enemies. Throughout decades, this has been the narrative painted about us. It has been, it has impacted our lives, our mental health, our reputation, and our overall well-being. We saw that hatred that lived against the Hispanic and Latino, Latina communities and its impacts through the Trump's racist administration. Him and his admin and followers pushed that narrative further, putting our lives and reputations at risk and in fear. I am disappointed that this level of criminalization and discrimina discrimination has reached this university and this council, especially being an HSI, especially after receiving the seal of excelencia. I am worried of what this means to the rest of the student body. I feel worried about voicing my own concerns and ideas since I could be labeled as a criminal or lawbreaker like countless of others have done to my community. Will this be the same treatment that other uh, POC students come and get? And to Mike and Will, I hope you both have had a moment of peace throughout this entire storm. I hope this moment doesn't stop you from continuing this hard work of advocacy and representation, but rather strength strengthens your strengthens the need for you to be here in present and being a representation of the Latino community. As a Latino student, I stand with you both and wish you the peace and tranquility in the storm. And as a Latino student, I thank you for your representation and advocacy. I yield the rest of my time for this comment. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, Naomi? Um, for those of you who, well, thank you, Gabe. That was well said, um, and I agree with every word of it. And for those of you who are sitting here trying to say that like, oh, it's not about race, you always make it about race. Well, because it is. You guys sit here, and I think it's very comical how Met Media can come in and come up with a story in 48 hours. 48 hours. Y'all come up with a story about how this white boy comes up here with this, this his little society, whatever, and goes and taunts and goes on and on about his issue. Uh -uh. And he... But yet when a person of color was having a conflict with TSAC in the university, where was Met Media? Why weren't they telling that story? Why didn't that get any news? Huh? And but yet here we are. We're, but when it comes to exploiting us, it's real quick, real quick to get on the, the, the podium, the, the platform, whatever. And it's so disappointing. And you don't hear about the stories that come from MSU Denver where they had a whole they've had lawsuits against professors who were a people of color. But that's not put out there. You know what I mean? Like they, the racism doesn't get put out there because it's supposed to be put under wraps. But I thought that's what our media people were here to do was to uncover that shit, to give us the real story, right? And the even funnier part about all of this is that our meetings are recorded. So our students and our Met Media and anybody else on campus has access to that, to go in and look at what happened and show that in no way were any of us against the resolution. We were simply asking for amendments for the timing of which we distributed the money, which don't get me wrong. I'm not like 
I get that our budget is well able to withhold $15,000. That's fine. I'm not against that. Even in the comments, I said that like, I'm for it. It's just $7,000 upfront. And guess what? No change would have been made from that week to the next week. But because this little boy threw a fucking temper tantrum, nobody got anything. And the best part about it is that (laughs) if you would have just accepted something, they would have had something done in the past week. And if we would have started, and if they really wanted to take an initiative, if all of us want to take initiative, I'll, I'll be willing to put the council and throw us all on some accountability real quick. We should have been talking to the grocery stores from the get about getting this taken care of because we talked about it in our very first meeting when it came to our goals. We wanted to partner up with King Supers, Walmart, or Safeway and try to see if they had some kind of food donation policy that they could get with us behind. But we didn't even try to look into that. Instead, we try to just put a Band-Aid on it by giving $15,000. But guess what? They're going to continually need that $15,000. It's just a Band-Aid. Why not give them something more consistent and reliable when you can just have an oncoming truck every Wednesday, every Tuesday, every, whatever, every week come in and distribute a shit ton of food that could give you a huge variety for people who have celiac disease or vegetarians or vegans. That would be something so huge. But instead, you think it's OK to just sit here and play the blame game? Not you guys, but just in general. It's not cool. It's not cool. It's very colonialistic. But I also think that there's, it's just, we're not treating each other with humanity. Again, y'all don't deserve this. They don't deserve it. But they also don't deserve to, we also don't deserve to be treated by this, like this either. Like, we're, we, nobody was trying to be against this from the get. And it's just really disappointing that once again, the story goes in favor of the person who's technically the lead of society, which is once again, two white males. And if you want to sit here once again and say it's not about race, check yourself because it is. I just want to clarify something. So Reed did reach out to Miguel and the food pantry about doing what you're talking about, Naomi. And and we were told to wait. We were told to wait until they check their uh, their uh, corporate partnerships. There are emails about that. Um, so we we tried and it, we were told to hold off. Um, I just and I just want to add further that um, what I felt with the legality and the process with Robert's rules, it reminds me of when you don't speak a language and they abuse that and they weaponize it against you. And that's how people end up going to jail for not speaking the language and just signing things that they don't know they're signing. If this council is to represent elitist and uh, non um, uh, accessible ways, we're not representing the university. Because we're not, we are not a private university. Um, So I want students to know that we're here to represent them, not only, like all of them, however their experiences, not just people who have the ability and the privilege to look at a book and go through a day to night because I don't know about y'all, but I have four jobs. Pause it. Okay, I'll stop now. Lene at Alejandro. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, so it is actually time for public comment. Um, so unless there's a public comment, I think we need to suspend this conversation for just a sec. I do have a public comment on behalf of Black Era. Black Era has asked me to come forward and talk about this subject from their perspective. Um, Just letting y'all know that once again, once I kind of already went off on it, that they are very hurt and re-traumatized again, that this got such big news in less than 48 hours. But yet they've been pushing us and pushing us to just have a conversation, to just get to know them to just be cooperative. And I get it from the perspective of not being able to handle situations that challenge you. We are so used to just being it this, 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 that way. Like we don't think to think outside of the box. But once again, when they got us all riled up, so you say, or got us, you know, trying to be challenged and think uh, from a different perspective and try new things, they were suppressed. They were silenced. They were labeled bullies. They were labeled many different things. And then they were, once again, like I said, silenced. 
But yet then someone comes out here trying to get our Latinos to come in here, another set of people of color, to get them thrown off of a board. And all of a sudden, everyone's paying attention. Everyone's getting paying everything. Everyone's getting attention. And it's just it's very disappointing. And that's not OK that the university silenced another set of black voices. Again. James. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, my name is James Vargas. I am a former counsel or on here on TSAC. Um, I won't spend too much on this because I know that this has just been a very uh, tough week for everyone. Um, but I will just say that I personally quite thinking it is pretty appalling for anyone on this council to initiate a recall on any member because the whole point of TSAC is to be a flat structure and to work together. But if you're going to go behind the backs of each other and do stuff like this, you're not serious about working together. And quite frankly, there was nothing illegal done, in my honest opinion, looking at both Robert's rules and the Constitution that I wrote. There was nothing illegal done. Uh, Will asked a question, and Mike second a motion. Now, if you can show me where in anything that is illegal, because if we're going to start punishing members for asking questions, then I guess all of us are in deep trouble. That'd be like you asking a question in class and your teacher going and telling the deans that you asked this sort of question. Like, that's unfair. Um, especially given how thick Robert's Rules is. It is my fault Robert's Rules is part of the Constitution, but I never thought it'd get weaponized like this because I knew we needed at least some sort of structure to lead our meetings. So for me, I am terribly sorry that this is happening to you guys. I know you're not going to blame me, but I do take responsibility for writing it in. But I also think it's really just appalling that anyone would weaponize the food pantry against the student government because like everyone has said here, no one said that they did not want to support the food pantry. They just want to make sure that the budget was working, that you know they can safely make this a donation. I want everyone to remember that this is a donation. This is the kindness of our hearts, and for anyone just to expect we're supposed to give money to the food pantry is ridiculous because you know this is student funds, and we can find so much other things to do it with. Not saying that food insecurity is not important, but we can find other ways outside of the food pantry to uh, fix food insecurity. I know that's what you guys are all doing, and the fact that this is now pulling that down, but I'm happy to see another resolution was made to keep it going and show that you guys are serious makes me happy. And the fact that it has roughly seven people who have worked on it makes me even more happy because that's what real legislation looks like is when you guys deliberate and figure things out together. And so to everyone who's still in this room or online, thank you for being here and taking this seriously because the work you guys do, do it does matter. But when things like this, this type of I'm not, I'm going to lie, pettiness, it obstructs everything. And it's a bad look for TSAC, but it's also a bad look for overall MSU Denver because not only are we representing the students, we're representing the school. And so if we can't get our, our act together on our third year as TSAC, then we really need to consider how can we make an effective government for both the students and this university so that way we don't have this every year. I hate seeing everyone here in pain. I hate hearing how Naomi's struggling with stuff, Mike's struggling with this, Denny. Like, I know all of you are hard workers. Because you were all so very passionate, um, especially you guys from last year. Because we're very passionate about a lot of things, and I love that. We may not always agree on things, but that's okay. That's the point of student government. But we can find a common ground and work together. So again, to you guys here, thank you for being here. I'm so sorry this is happening, but hopefully you guys can move forward together. Thank you for your comments, James. Uh, Bree, you had something to say? I wanted to just make um, a quick statement to say that uh, I wrote down the word requirements for Robert's rules, as Paul had stated that, and I believe that's incorrect, that we are using Robert's rules as a guide only. And, you know, I, as the older person on this council, I would say that because I have gone through in many governance roles in my life <laughs> without knowing Robert's rules, abiding by some of these general things without such officiousness. Um, I, you know, I feel attacked because I don't know it either. And maybe that's ageism. I don't know. I was called a mother that is non-confrontational by Paul last week. And so I think that it's really important that we, we all, you know, have some, some consideration from each other, for each other, and to Give a bit of slack in in not being so um, orderly with these rules. We know how to run meetings, and we also know how to have grace with each other. So that's all. 
Thank you, Reed. Yeah, you can come up. Well, unless someone else comes up with public comment, I think we can continue the other conversation if needed for just a little bit. Yep. It's not when you said that maybe is it ageism. It's not. This is colonialism. It is colonialism. And I made that statement from the very one of the very first meetings that we had. Robert's rules is very much in, it's not inclusive and it's traumatizing for us. We're sitting here like, don't get me wrong, wrong, walking on this campus, knowing that at one point the MSU was like holding our ancestors here, you know, and they rightfully did all the right things to get those back to the tribes that they rightfully belong to. Um, but having to walk on this campus and see these buildings and know that my people were here just living life and doing the way that they were supposed to. And then to just get reminded once again, that this is the same governing system that took us out, that tricked us because we didn't know the language. And then continuously to this day, we still don't know the language and they continue to not uphold treaties and such. It's, in, it's not inclusive and it's traumatizing. So no, it's not just you, it's everybody. This governing system has been here to make us feel small, to make us feel like we cannot contribute a more approachable and perspective opening method. And that's sad, but it is what it is. And that's what some of our fellow counselors believe in. And we can respect that belief, but that does not mean that we need to enforce it either. All right. All right. Well, unless someone pops up in the next little bit with public comment, because um, we have about four minutes left of that, um, let's move on to Alejandro with his uh, um, open floor announcement. Um, <clears throat> so I basically just wanted to talk a little bit about the situation that happened earlier. Um, so I just wanted to make it clear that it's not that we didn't want to support the proposition about a rowdy's food corner um it also it goes back to when this was first proposed he didn't necessarily um reach out to the budget committee to try to figure anything out he basically just tried to pull these funds um however we can he tried to rush it just try to pressure us um initially what we wanted was to make sure that you know obviously we can well in the beginning with the budget that we had we were confident that we were able to give those 15,000, but since we started seeing the budget cuts, we started being a little hesitant. And um, it's not that we didn't want to give the money, it's that we were trying to find solutions that are more, you know, sustainable for Rowdy's Food Corner, because obviously um, right now, like let's say in two, three years, um, enrollment goes down, obviously the budget's going to be less. And, you know, that's, they're expecting those 10,000, but they might not be getting those 10,000 or 15,000, whatever it is. But um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that it's you know clear that we do support this proposition or you know this proposition and everything or this resolution. But it's just the way they went about it wasn't necessarily um, the correct way. And um, yeah, just a, a little bit about when we were talking about the norms. Um, there was an agreement that you know obviously we're not all gonna get along or agree with our decisions. And that's not confirmation for you to throw a tantrum or, you know, storm out or anything, because at the end of the day, we still have to be professional and ensure that we respect each other's business decisions. So just because walking out of the room necessarily for me doesn't make sense. It just shows how petty you're being because you're not getting your way. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, last call for open announcements before we move on. Uh, Will? I'd like to make a quick statement. Um, over the last few days, um, me and Mike have been to what I have come to believe and been told is just dragging our names through the dirt the mud on false grounds of anything being unconstitutional when we've had multiple people look at it, look at the video footage 
and confirm to us that that is not the case. What I believe the case to be is that certain counselors did not get what they want the way they wanted when they wanted and did not want to cooperate with anyone. It's unfortunate that it has come to this, and I'm deeply saddened by the actions of Paul Nelson and Thomas Cheney. That is all. Andre? Yeah, and I just wanted to say one more thing, too. So um, I did find it kind of absurd how the the counselors that were picked um to me it kind of sounds like it was more of a personal issue and he's just trying to attack because obviously i was part of the the vote that said no because i didn't necessarily agree with what he was saying so i find it kind of weird i'm not saying that i want him to put my name on there but i'm just saying that i think it's weird that he didn't put my name on it because again i voted against it and it sounds like it's just targeting these two specific counselors and yeah, like I said, like people need to learn how to separate business and personal life because business is business at the end of the day. So, All right. And at that, I think, Dr. Brown. Okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, respond to a few of the statements that were made earlier around our legal counsel um, and uh, illegal actions and such, I sense, um, well, first of all, I consulted with the general counsel specifically. I asked TSAC um, to please pause on moving forward with anything until I had the opportunity, along with Armando, who is the other co-advisor, to consult our legal counsel. And the reason why I did that is because terms like illegal were being thrown loosely um, around and I wanted to ensure that we were getting legal guidance when terms like illegal are being thrown around um, in very public ways. <laughs> and I just want you all to know that I would not sit in a room and allow illegal things to happen. I think that I might get fired for that. Um, so <laughs> and after consulting with legal counsel, they assured me that nothing that took place last Friday was illegal. So I just want to start there. Um, I appreciate the remarks and the comments that were made from multiple perspectives today um, regarding the various forms of trauma um, and triggering. I think that what has occurred over the past week has caused to students both within and outside of the council based on their identities. I think that's real and valid and I feel really bad about that because I've seen it and I see it in my office and I'm seeing it everywhere. And, you know, for those of you who um, need to uh, connect with me outside of here, I invite you to do so and we can process some of that. Um, in addition to that, I also want to offer that the Constitution is the document that you all decided is your superseding document that governs all that you do. And so I and I said this earlier this week, the Constitution is where you all really need to do some additional work around um, additions around if you choose to include removal of counselors or um, any other things that you want to make sure are in there so that those are outlined very specifically. Um, so I just wanted to to offer that 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 can't be a, a one off decision that has to be a decision that is a collective decision and something that is voted on. And that was what was also offered by our general counsel. And then lastly, um, the handbook, there are a lot of contradictions around the handbook and it being referenced in your constitution. And so I just want to make sure that the language around that is really cleaned up in your constitution as well, because I think it's really, really confusing. Um, and so that also needs to be addressed. Um, but that was the guidance I was given by by the general counsel. That is, I was the one who reached out to them, and I was very transparent in that process. Um, and in terms of some of the additional remarks that have been made about Armando and I in our um, role or um, unethical behavior, I think is what I read this morning, I just want to offer that um, I hope 
that if you all really thought that or believe that, that you would consult with us directly and have a conversation with us um, around where you believe that or how you believe that's happening. And I would be more than happy to find ways to address that if that actually were the case. But I, we spend a lot of time with you all and that felt, um, yeah, just unnecessary. Um, but I, it, it's, I just think that you all know that we show up every week here, unless Armando's in class right now, as he should be, as you all get to go to class and take care of your priorities too. And I, I just really hope you all recognize that we would not be here and spend as much time with you as we do if we did not care. That's it. I, I just want to say thank you for your work, Dr. Brown. It is it, it is very apparent that the majority of this council very very much so appreciates you and Armando. You guys do great work, and if if two counselors don't see it that way, then so be it. I mean, that's that's them. That's that uh, that is on them. That is not on this council. Um, your guidance and your advice is always welcome. In that sense, um, I have a question because you reach out to legal. Um, what would what so this recall petition? What was their thoughts on that? What was their uh, legal opinion on that? Because um, the petition is not, or in terms of the student election codes, are not referenced in the Constitution, then, um, and since the Constitution is the superseding document, then the petition is not valid. Um, because you all did not vote or vote to include the um, elections code explicitly within your constitution. And so as far as we can tell, according to the constitution, um, that's why the removal process needs to be outlined if that is something you all in fact choose to do, but it is not, um, it's not valid. Um, I'm happy if who would like to work on reframing this as part of the accountability committee and ask that we help work alongside our advisors and maybe with the help of James Vargas, who framed the original one. I think that would be great. I also think there should be some parameters around reasonable um, and meaningful parameters around what removal and why removal, not just haphazard based on nothing. Mike, just to add on to that, the only parameters um, for removal currently in the Constitution is the Judiciary Committee, in which you, until it is changed for the notice, you have the ability to bring in a investigation to fill the committee seats. Um, it's very clearly outlined um, the powers that you have in that committee. So um, I say uh, choose it wisely, but you are allowed to investigate this and bring forth articles of removal. Um, you can do a lot of that, so. Okay. So are we, what? So with that, are we, do you have another comment, Mike? Uh, I like to make a motion per se. Um, All right. We are behind schedule or quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I motion um, that if you don't have a comment, just or like, I'd say leave it. Let, let advisor updates go, but like, let's scratch um, faculty, staff, senate, dean of council, and uh, transitional committee updates. If that's all right with that. Yes, and Paul Angular dates. I uh, if 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 the chair if the chairs of those committees are willing of it. I motion for oh so I'll motion that that we just scrap everything to advisor updates and then go on with our agenda. I second that. All right. So it needs to come to a vote. How many ayes? Aye. 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 How many no's? Abstentions? I abstained because I was in the bathroom, so all right. Well, we're moving on to uh, old and new business. Um, and Denny, did you want to take over at that point or? Did we already do old business? 
We have not done all Wait, the hold on. We said all of the other ones except for the advisor updates and uh, Dr. Oh, Martin has I apologize. Update. Yes, I could have. OK, um, just an update is that Will um, and Taylor spent some time this week in the um, Dr. Simpkins and uh, our VP for Student Affairs and Taylor, um, our Dean of Students, spent time in the food pantry this week. And they are planning to have a meeting with the staff of the food pantry next Friday at noon. And that is a meeting with just that team to help them better understand the plan in terms of commitment and support from the university. So I just wanted to, to share that with you all as an update. In addition, um, they will be, I will be coordinating a time and space for them to meet with TSAC um, outside of your normal um, meeting time to have a similar conversation so that there is clarity on the path forward for um, supporting R Rowdy's Corner. So I just want to offer that. Um, and then I will do my due diligence to work with um, our budget uh, fiscal manager uh, for student affairs and Alejandro um, and the budget committee to get clarity on the TSAC budget or at least a timeline so we have better numbers to be operating by moving forward. Um, because there are some potential implications and things you are, are going to have to collaborate on and make some decisions on at some point soon. So we just want to make sure that you're operating from the right numbers. Um, and I want you to know this is a common problem, not just for TSAC, across the university right now with budgets loading inaccurately in Workday, um, our new system. So this is a system-wide issue, not a TSAC issue. And a, I apologize that that's the reality, but it is. Um, and then lastly, oh, I guess that's it. Yeah, I guess just lastly, President's Cabinet is next week and uh, Denny is up. Um, to, is it Denny or Matt? I think, okay, Denny will be uh, supporting or representing you all at President's Cabinet next week. Um, so if there are any important relevant updates you want to make sure that she offers, that will happen next week. And I um, just wanted to remind you all of that as well. That's it. Um, Alejandro? Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick comment. So um, thank you for saying that, you know, how it's like a, a system wide, you know, obviously it's not just TSAC that's struggling with this. Um, I feel like that would have been something helpful that, of course, since the ones that are very um, persistent with the situation on getting funding for Rowdy, if they would have actually known that from the very beginning, a lot of this would have been avoided. So and then, of course, those representatives weren't in the meetings. So they were kind of talking pretty bold to not be there. So All right. Old business. Um, so we need to vote on the Sackness presentation from last week. Mike. OK. So, um, <clears throat> yes, so the SACNAS presentation. So, a student org came to us last week to vote um, to extend money uh, or to, for us to extend money. Uh, do you mind pulling up the budget they sent? But um, so, this is the SACNAS presentation. But I also know we have a guest in here today, Dave Barasa. Um, are you here to observe or are you here to, uh, just to observe? Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Bye, to talk about it. Okay, cool, cool. So, but um, just for all of future reference, um, to release funding to them, a motion will be ma um, will be made, um, and two thirds is required to pass, and the fu funding will be allocated to. And I believe the number is two thousand two hundred and fifteen dollars. So, I will leave that as the opening statement to the council. And let people go ahead. So, let Matt, you wrap up to you. So, I I I invited Dave Barasa to be here. He reached out to me about some um questions he had about funding proposals from student orgs who are asking for student travel funding. And so I asked him to be here to help not only um, communi you know, communicate some of the questions he has, but some of the challenges around this um, setup and wanting to make sure that we're working in uh, collaboration with Dave because it's really important since he is the primary funder 
of student orgs um, accessing resources. And so that is why Dave is here. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Dave Ferrasa, I work in CMEI. Um, I oversee student travel program and professional development funding uh, at MSU. I've been here 12 years and uh, for a period of that time oversaw student orgs as well. Uh, so very familiar uh, with uh, the process and whatnot. Um, so I recently have been working with um, both SACNIS and, and there's another uh, group that's currently traveling uh literally right now uh the IEEE uh group uh that's a, at an engineering humanitarian conference and um it came about uh to me as I was working with the groups um so I arrange once they get their funding through the student travel program process um they then work with me to go through the logistics of paying for their travel booking things going through emergency procedures and so on and so forth I know many of you in this room have gone through that process. Uh, I think almost all of you uh, are familiar with student travel. Um, and so anyways, as I was meeting with these students, uh, they had expressed uh, that they had received funding from SGA. Um, and typically when that's the case, if, if there's other programs, usually it's academic departments will support students in addition um, to cover expenses. Um, typically, I work hand in hand with the administrator, um, you know, to get verification that those funds were approved and that, um, you know, in terms of the dollar amount and, and so on and so forth. And uh, we work very closely on that pre-trip. Um, now, we have one group that is currently on their trip and, and they have paid a lot of expenses out of pocket um, and hoping to get reimbursed. Uh, they have utilized the student travel funding that they received, but um, they have expressed both groups, SACNESI and this other one expressed that they have already received funding from you all. Um, and it doesn't, that occurred to me that that was not the case because it's it's going up to a vote now. Um, and so my concern came in, there's, there's a few concerns. I think one is, so student travel, um, student travel's budget is also student fee funded. So it's the same, comes from the same sources as your budget, um, as well as, uh, well, there's 14 programs in all, CMEI, there's Classroom to Career Hub, there's, you know, various programs that are student fee funded. All of those programs are unique. Um, so each program serves, or each budget serves a particular reason, a particular, um, you know, has a, a purpose, if you will. Um, my concern and, and what I've seen over the years is we want to be really careful of duplicating existing programs. So it wouldn't make sense to have two student travel programs on campus uh, because for one, it leads to confusion to students. It leads to conflict. It leads to this sort of last minute pressure of, oh my gosh, they're on their trip. We feel bad. We, we should give them money. Um, it leads to a lot of miscommunication, um, and I'm just worried about that. Now, I'm not coming today to, to tell you how to spend your money. Um, I think it's great that SGA wants to support students, especially student organizations, um, with professional development because that's my area, and I, you know, I, I wish I could give more funding towards that. So I think it's fabulous. Like the, the whole concept is great, but my concern is more around the the structure and how that money is being dispersed, um, the logistics around it, the timing. Um, so our policy in student travel is that students need to submit their applications at least 30 days prior to their trip. Um, and now I'm seeing groups that are coming through here that are literally on their trip now and this SACNIS group, which is traveling in a week or two, um, I think 14 days or so. Um, it just, it, it creates that, that small time crunch creates a lot of anxiety, a lot of unknowns. These students are, are really counting on that. I mean, when I see $2,000, that's more than what we gave them. Um, and, and so that's a lot of money on the table. If, if it's not voted on, those students now have to pivot within a couple of weeks to figure out how they're going to make that up. And so I think, 
I don't know what the solution is, but I, I do think there needs to be a process that is clear, concise, and aligns. And, and so I guess what I'm coming is, is I'm not telling you to not fund students to travel, um, but if you do, let's maybe work together to develop a system that, that really makes it streamlined um, for all student groups and, and really is, is uh, clear, concise, and that sort of thing. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I had other things, but I, I forgot. Um, yeah, that's kind of the big thing. It's just concerns. And also, you know, with these groups that are that are upcoming, um, I think there was also some miscommunication. Uh, like they told me that they were already funded. And when I reached out to Dr. Barone, she said they weren't. Um, and I think there's, you know, now I'm in that situation of I was literally sitting with them to book their travel at that time. And we had to, you know, kind of put things out at a standstill because I said, well, I can't spend money that I'm, I haven't been approved to spend yet. Um, and so um, I think going forward with some sort of process, um, I think is really a good idea to make sure that um, students are supported and, and really being careful of duplicating efforts. Um, you know, it's one thing if, if you want to invest in professional development and student travel, I think, you know, I'm going to be the first in line to say, yes, let's do it, but let's do it appropriately. Um, equitably, right, to make sure that all students have access to it and not just student clubs or just students that are connected to SGA, but let's make sure campus-wide um, is aware of this resource um, and work together um, to do that. I will say lastly, the last time this came up with student government was several years ago when I was overseeing student clubs and organizations. Uh, the For the longest time, student government had a really hard time spending their budget. They they really didn't know what to use that money on. And so for many years, there was giant roll forwards of 150,000, 180 that just kept rolling over from year to year. And then one year came up and the student government was really gung-ho on supporting student clubs and organizations or in student groups. And they said, well, we're going to create a bunch of financial resources for them. And at the time, they created an events fund to support student orgs on their events. Well, it turns out we already had the campus events fund um, through, at the time, student activities that provided uh, $4,000 per year for student clubs to host events. Well, SGA was doing their own thing, and then we had our own thing, and it, and it created a lot of challenges, mostly with accuracy, communication, situations like this where you know, a club thought they were funded by SGA, but they really weren't. They didn't realize the process um, and so on and so forth. And so um, just I, I would caution and, and maybe relook at how you're opening these grants or funds up to students and just making sure that it's, um, you know, you're working with the appropriate folks to, you know, get on the same page and work together um, if you are going to do that. But, um, yeah, that's all I had to say. I I appreciate the, you know, the the willingness to support students. I think that's one of your roles, right? As a previous SGA advisor, I always push that. Yes, let's get more money in the hands of students. Let's, you know, let's get it out there. Let's stop roll rolling over hundreds of thousands of dollars, but let's do so in a manner in which it's um, it's going to work, right? And that it's not going to create more challenges. I, I have Mike will breathe. Then Naomi. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dave. Um, I agree with a lot of what you were saying. A um, little context here. Um, the, so this comes from the handbook, and this is before even I was here. The handbook was established. So last year when I got here, um, in the handbook it said here, and when I was elected budget chair last year, there's a process for directing funding slash sponsoring of student organizations. So like all things kind of new, um, there wasn't any follow through with that. So I had to create the system. And last year, what I did was we passed a system which is a last resort fund. So if, per se, the student organization has exceeded through like the money student travel has allowed them, then they are allowed to come present to student government and the grant will be released to them. This um, most, the first time this happened was actually last year. So a student organization called Pi Sigma Epsilon exceeded their student travel funds um, and then they came to TSAC and we granted them $3,000 as well. 
The second instance of this happening was actually, and we've interpreted this, was events on campus. Hey, you want to throw a giant event on campus? Well, if you exceed your campus event funding, come to student government. And a lot of, and I'll send you, I'll send you what the paper I've crafted is. There's a lot of check marks you have to check off for to even get like in front of student governments. And that's what the budget committee here is for. If we receive something and has not gone through the right channels, then we deny it usually. So we determined that SACNES through uh, this has or uh, has checked off the correct boxes and able is able to present student government. That's what happened last week. So um, I'm more than happy to send you the document and send you part in the handbook because I do believe like it w there wasn't any follow through last year. So I created what I could do best, but you know, I think there's room for improvements and I think absolutely we can collaborate on that. So, yes. And I would say, you know, clarification is, is again, not doing it, but making sure like for me, it was like, well, who's the point person? When the club told me we got funding through them and it, and it wasn't Sackness, it was the other one. I said, well, okay, who approved your funding? And they said, well, SGA. And I said, okay, well, who's the point? Per who am I reaching out to to verify that the funds have been approved and how much? And, you know, is there an approval letter um, that we can go off? So, because uh, I don't mind, you know, using my corporate card to to pay for those expenses and cover it and then charge it to SGA. But I just need something that shows, you know, maybe it's it's something from SGA that says, we approved X amount of dollars for this trip and it needs to go towards X, Y, and Z, you know, and signed off and or communication with a point person or something like that, I think is really important. Can I do a quick comment? comment? Yeah. Um, yes. So just to be, make sure clear, only SACNIS is on the docket for receiving funds, not the other org that's currently traveling. Uh, we denied them because we also have a funding calendar in place. So if you're going to go, you have to kind of fit between that calendar. Now, SACNIS managed to get in the calendar before the date ended. So that's why they were uh, through there. But I don't mind working on that as well, too. It's about 15 days. It's about like a 15. So if you get it's 30 days, yes. You, you give us the what you want, basically, like 30 days in advance. And the next day is a, a, a presentation, and then we vote on it. So. Really quickly, how how is the student government promoting this resource and others to the student body? So, um, honestly, it's just been by word of mouth right now. I think that it would be good for us to give it the PR committee and like make like an overall like um, like post and put it on our Instagram or because nobody ever comes to our like Teams meetings or like checks out our files, which they have open access to. They just don't ask to look at them. Um, so we could put it there as well. But personally, I just go all around the science building but that's just because that's my specialty right like i know the science building i know many many different people's professors chairs um i talk to everybody there so just like you know we were having our discussion um you know i let a professor know about the certificate program and he's you know ecstatic about it but that's been um i think on just word of mouth by all of us because i'm pretty sure uh gabe was actually advocating for a couple of students as well last semester um but a lot of students just kind of like they see a conference like, oh, it's out of state, we can't go. So I think it's that they don't even think to look for the resources instead of being like, hey, how can I get the school to pay for this? Um, so I think that's also a mentality that we haven't really broken, but it's also really hard for us. And I think uh, Danny and I were talking about coming up with some way to reach the actual majority of our student body, because we have what, 17,000 ish students something here. And granted, this is a commuter campus, so it's really hard. How do we figure out how to reach 17,000 students on a regular basis? Like, you, it's almost impossible. So um, that's another one of the issues that we have ran into is that how do we reach even 10K worth of our students? So, I mean, that would be something that I think is we would need to take up with the admin and figure out how can we collaborate to use our authority here on campus to like, I guess, piggyback off of y'all's authority to be able to create incentive packages for students to just look at, just be like, hey, these are what you're paying for, use them, you know? Um, so yeah, that, that's just my opinion on it. If y'all have anything to say. So Will has something and then I have something right after. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Um, and exactly as Naomi stated, I do see that we have an issue reaching students and bringing awareness to what we can offer them. And if we can fix that, then, you know, all the better for everyone at MSU. Um, 
on a side note, I did want to say that I think if we work with you, like the budget committee as well, I think should probably work with you and have a direct line to you when these presentations come. And I will make sure to work with the budget committee to make that at least get the ball rolling for that to make sure we can write something concrete in the responsibilities of either the budget committee or someone, right? So that that way there's a direct line to you, you know, um, communication. Yeah, and I think I think that's a great idea. Um, and, and that's what I mean by like streamlining and, and clarifying process. I, you know, one thing, so Ree sits on our committee, our travel committee, and I'm thinking of, you know, the ability there that making that connection to all of the student groups that come through the student travel process and at least raising that awareness that that the resource exists, I think is really important. I would also encourage you, and I someone correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like it's only open to student orgs or is it open to all students, the fund? Student orgs, student, so individual student orgs are not allowed to uh, utilize this resource. It needs to be a registered student org through CBI. Okay. Um, I just want to make like a quick point of clarification for y'all for SACNIS on their behalf. Um, we have a student um, who is a part of SACNIS and part of like our rules and all that stuff is that you don't have to be a STEM major in order to join the organization because we're just trying to amplify, um, like we said, Chicana, Chicanos, Native Americans and STEM. Um, and like STEM can be something different. This student in particular, um, their major is psychology and at MSU Denver, there's a very specific or for the department that is or program the program the program that was helping support SACNIS get there they have a very specific requirement for what is considered stem in psychology and those were like neuro uh like neurology type stuff like stuff that you would be doing for like a thesis and this student is an undergrad so there's like no way she would be taking classes like that um so our biggest concern is that um per student i think it costs something like um I don't know, it was like 17, 17 something or another. So we were worried that we weren't going to be able to get funding for that specific student. And I, excuse my language, but I'll be damned if I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a student come with. She worked her butt off for us. She put out, you know, loads of information for us. Um, she was our secretary. She's taking notes for us. She's showing up to every meeting. Like she put in the work. She deserved it. And I'm not going to let a student be deemed unqualified or um, inadequate to come to a conference that's going to put them at a place that's going to help them excel in their career. That's just not who I am. So I specifically directed them to SACNIS, so that's that's on that's on me. Um, but the extra money, I know it's a little over uh, 1700 What was because we were worried, um, in my experience, we went to SACNIS last year, um, they don't give us snacks, okay? And like, I don't know if you all went to like a, a conference, but like it's draining. You are walking from a 15 minute presentation to another 15 minute presentation for literally like 10 hours in a day. Like it's intense. Um, and I was worried that what if like, you know, they didn't have gluten-free stuff or they didn't have vegetarian stuff, like if they weren't gonna meet our dietary needs. So we asked for a small budget to like be there just in case they couldn't. Cause we do have some food support, um, but, if for whatever reason we have a student who has to order at a specific restaurant because they have like the fryers that don't mix for people who have celiac, um, then those tend to cost a little bit more. So we just wanted to be prepared rather than not. Um, and I just did that based off of experience. But David has been super helpful and just an amazing person when it comes to that process. So I just want you guys to know that like that's why we asked for the budget that we did. Um, and we did exceed our um, student travel funds first. Um, we just want to make sure that we had enough for that student in particular and the dietary needs. <laughs> yeah, one thing. Thank you, Naomi. Um, so I just want to touch base um, and ask the budget committee to reach out to Dave for the longer term uh, collaboration um, and see if make a motion to see if we want to uh, have like seven more minutes of debate to fund SACNIS. Second that motion. Uh, all ayes? Aye. Any noes? Extensions? Okay. Three? 
Dave, I wanted to say, um, if we could talk about, I know that they present to us and when they presented, just as last year when the other group, when Blair presented for that, they kind of used the template that we grade by, right? And I don't know if how you feel about that, if that would be okay for us to ask those kind of points from your existing template, because it's helpful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, th and that's what I mean by coming together and making sure that we are, we're both on the same page and yeah. that we're both asking for the same information and even timelines. Uh, I think it just makes yeah. things much easier, right? Yeah. Yeah. That we're both 30 days, that we're both, you know, we're making sure that students are planning out um, everything and that, and, and that's, yeah, I, I think for sure. So we use a rubric that is uh, provided to the students before they submit their applications and the rubric covers, you know, kind of how their funding is determined mm. uh, by the committee. Um, and I think it would be great to have uh, you all utilize that rubric as well um, to determine the funding. That way we're all kind of on the same page when it right. comes to that. Um, uh, one other thing that I, I would encourage, uh, actually two things, if you're going to continue to support student orgs, one wonderful method to do that outreach for this fund is, is through the weekly blog. Uh, that's put out by um, uh, D, uh, who's in our office. Uh, she sends it out Monday mornings, I think. Uh, and that goes out to all registered student organizations. Um, so it's very targeted to student orgs. And then I guess my second point to counteract that is, is I would encourage you all to, to maybe consider opening up this to all currently enrolled students, not just um, exclusive to student organizations. Um, and, and so something to think of down the road uh, is, is being a little more equitable and um, inclusive to, to other students across campus. Yeah, so I just wanted to maybe see if we could again continue that conversation with our budget committee because um, I just want to try and also respect our time. We've been a little behind today. Um, and so we can stay focused on the current agenda with SACNIS today um, with our current uh, format while we update it with you in future meetings. Well, or Mike and Will, Naomi and did you have your hand? Right. Yes, so um, I've sent you our procedures uh, on your teams as well. Um, I believe there's a reason why we can't fund individual students. I believe Armando mentioned there's, a, there's, a, there's like a policy around it in terms of our budget. So that would be, he, I, 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 he, he controls that card. I was going to make actually make a motion to vote on this, to definitely, to vote to fund SACNES. Um, real quick. Um, before we vote, uh, did somebody, I feel like they said they had a question. What was your question about SACNIS again? It wasn't a question. It was a statement. Um, I just wanted to state for the counselors before this vote to um, remember that even though there might be a student who isn't classified as STEM, they still have a passion for it. And they they deserve because of that passion because of that effort um that love that they have for it um i believe that they should get that student and the whole group should get funding thank you and to go piggyback off of that i just wanted because i don't want like our program directors to look like mean people because <laughs> they're not dr lou and Lori and linda and they're just they're really great people and they've been helping us 1000 percent trying to navigate this um, I, it's just that that's just how their grant works. Their grant has very specific cult, like, um, standards that you have to go by. So we get that. We know it sucks. Um, but Will, you're 1000% right. And I don't care what anybody says there's a science to everything. Okay. And just what they recognize is a colonialistic perspective and I will not stand for it. So, <laughs> um, just kind of keep that in mind is that we literally did everything we possibly could to pull, like, I don't know. I think we pulled together something like on our end, if we get this, I think we'll have raised like 7,000, just, just the students alone. There's like seven of us that worked really hard to get that seven grand in three months. Three months we did that. It's crazy. And I just had one quick question for the budget committee. Um, what is our current budget for um, this type of funding? 
And thank you, Dave, for joining us today. Thank you. Okay, real quickly, um, going off of the budget that's the budget cut that we're going off of, this could change in the future. It can mm -hmm. increase or decrease. Um, $9,785. All right. So we're, we're well within our uh, ability to do so. I just want to clarify that for the council. Uh, I second his motion, by the way. Oh, I was just on a motion again to vote on this. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So for. So since motion was raised, I guess that would close discussion. Um, no. What was the amount again? 15, right? 2015 or 2115? Either that or. It is $2,215. Okay. okay. To be directed out of our student orgs allocations fund to the SACNA student organization. Okay. All right. So there's a motion to bring a vote to the floor to donate that amount of money um, to SACNIS for their conference. Um, ayes? Aye. Aye. Noes? Abstentions? Looks like they get their money. Good job. Awesome. Yeah. Real quick, on behalf of Sackness, I just want to tell y'all thank you so much because, like, this is going to mean the world to that girl. Like, she worked so hard, and this was the this is the funds we were depending on to get her to the conference because we did not get enough from student travel to cover her fully. So, thank you all so 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 much. She is truly deserving of this. Three. Just a quick statement to say to our very kind and um, amenable PR committee that I think if. Once we come up with this um, plan, we should put this on the website too, as well as working through the Blorg, just to let students know, student groups know that this is available to a limited budget. But I agree, and I will. I look forward to hearing from the budget committee and their communications with Dave, and we will update our social media website and whatever else is needed to push us out to students. Um, so next on the agenda is the tabling bill. Yeah, we'll be back though. So I want to. This is mine and Will's bill. Um, I do want to start off. Um, we did have a friendly amendment during the week. Unfortunately, we did not post the updated version in time uh, per my statement at the beginning of the meeting. So we are going off of the one that was posted uh, a couple weeks ago. And I look forward to hearing those friendly amendments here so we can also discuss them. Um, but the purpose of this um, resolution is um, TSAC tabling of uh, creating the TSAC tabling events is mandatory for counselors to attend with the purpose of bringing awareness to our, per our presence on campus, both giving students more power and voice while fostering future relationships with the student body. Tabling may include giving out food, school supplies, and information, and gathering student voice regarding future SGT SAC initiative. Um, and the this resolution seeks to build a foundation of accountability. And this version references a budget of three thousand per semester, specifically refers reserved for tabling events and their success. Um, Based on conversations with other counselors, I would uh, propose kind of my own friendly amendment to it to actually. Yes, Danny? Sorry, point of order. I was just pointed out by James Vargas that uh, since it's your bill, you have to defer the oh, thing to me. Sorry. I apologize. I, I appreciate that, James. Then Thanks, Dan. I'll let you take over, Danny. Awesome. Uh, where are we? And that this will be tracked? Yeah, okay. This will be tracked by a signing sheet held at the event itself and digitized after. 
Demand data attendance is for all tabling by events with bigger, yeah, with bigger events sponsored by the school and for other student government purposes. Failing to meet the above attendance requirements or working with the public relations committee and our accountability system to find other appropriate opportunities to fill this requirement, the counselor would be, will be referred to the accountability system to address their lack of involvement. This will be done by utilizing restorative justice practices to help the counselor meet his requirement or appropriate alternatives to meet his requirement. The status of events attended will be evaluated every three months by the Public Relations Committee and updates to counselors will be sent out. Funding for each tabling event must be first approved by the Public Relations Committee then from the allocated 3,000 per semester. This money will be used specifically for tabling outside of school, outside of school sponsored events. This includes and is encouraged to be used in tabling with CCD and UCD student governments to demonstrate cooperation and cohesion between all three institutions. All other events outside the scope will still need to be presented to the Public Relationships Committee and the Council at large. Therefore, be resolved that there will be an expectation for counselors to interact with the student body through events and tabling initiatives. Be it further resolved that there will be allocated funding for tabling outside of school sponsored events to purchase materials that will encourage students to interact with the tabling. Therefore, be it further resolved. Therefore, uh, I request. OK. We're going to wait there. Um, I, I, I'm going to start the discussion real quick. I want to propose a friendly amendment to the outside of school because it sounds like we're going outside of the school to do events. Um, so if we could just clarify that these are on campus events. Um, yes, we we can uh, put more precise language in the bill just to make sure that it's on campus. Thank you. Um, Anybody else have anything to say? Oh, OK, Gabe, hold on. I have to start the timer. Give me a second. OK, Gabe, go ahead. Awesome, thank you. Um, So I uh, have a, a friendly amendment. Um, if possible, you know, I will type it out in the chat also. Um, so then if it passes, then it can just be, you know, put in there. Uh, so basically, for my friendly amendment, I'm just asking um, if it's possible that due to, you know, just like budget and stuff uh, uh, for this year, if you all would be okay with lowering the amount from 6,000 for this year to 4,000, and then um, each year, and then adding that each year, uh, each different, each council at the beginning of the year will vote on a new allocation uh, for for this a specific tabling um, based on their budget and what they see fit. Do any of you, any of you, you answer? Gabe, can you mute yourself? Thank you. Would any of you like to do a direct answer to that? Uh, we would be more than accepting of that if the council agrees. OK. Anybody else? Mike. I support the bill. I mean, I, I do. I think we need to be tabling outside. I don't think we need to collectively be tabling outside. So I don't think there's any excuse that not all the counselors are out there serving the students one way or another. And also, I appreciate the collaboration and the openness to collaborate. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to just add a clarification because um, I did. We tried to write this bill to where, for instance, if like all the tabling events do end up on days where uh, Council members are in class. Um, it's not going to be held against them as long as they can come to uh, the public relations committee to find other ways to support said tabling events. For example, like with our uh, Fall Fest tabling event, if they would have been able to help, like spend time, like cutting watermelons or helping prep and like, take down from the events. Um, it can be negotiated on a case by case basis for that to meet the requirement. Or I just sorry, I'm waiting. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to let you know, like I'm I'm down to help. I'd like I love this. I do want to table. I just want to let you guys know personally, 
if y'all have ever seen my schedule, it looks disrespectful. So just please let me know, like, at least, like, three weeks in advance so I can put it on my schedule so I can be there for y'all um, at whatever said time, as long as it doesn't interfere with my interfere with my um, classes or tutoring, which usually both of my tutorings end probably around 2.33. So, yeah. I'm just going to, like, point of clarification on that. I um so they're gonna have a signing sheet and then you get to sign up in advance for this so it will be up to you to fulfill that duty yeah okay sweet uh will to address your concerns we made the bill very flexible for every counselor to just come and literally vote on it together vote on the times i uh vote on the times of when we propose these tabling events. And of course it will be seen by you, by everyone. And if, for example, if you can't make it, we do offer many other days that, you know, could work with you and well in advance. So I hope that um, the way this bill is phrased and structured is flexible enough to, you know, help me um, help all counselors and their schedules uh be able to meet the requirements i don't know if that can help a little bit okay thank you will anybody else okay i motion can i can i can motion right just, just making sure <laughs> <laughs> you good so i good. motion we vote for this I second it yeah i was, just sure. I was gonna second it to make sure we can second things too okay here. um okay um I, I like to do this like individually because just for practice, guys. Uh, okay, well, let's start. Naomi, how do you vote? Yay. Okay. Uh, Mike? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay, Alejandro said yes. Will? Oh, I'm sorry, Re. I am so sorry, Re. <laughs> yes. Why are you sitting next to James? <laughs> um, okay. Will? Yay. Matt, yes. Yes, thank you, Matt. Um, okay, now one here. Denny, yes. Uh, Gabe. Yes. Okay. John. Yes. Thank you, John. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two thirds, uh, and it passes. We will be tabling. I'm very happy about this. Yeah, we'll be tabling. Yay. Perk. Yay. Beautiful. Okay. Love it. Um, okay. Uh, since the new, the task force is is uh, re, I'm going to hand the chair to Matt. That's not. All right. So we're moving to the next item of business with re safety task force. So I wanted to quickly just say that. I hope everyone saw the email that I sent um, in conjunction with Alejandro for this effort. Only Kristen responded to me to say she could not attend on the 20th. But basically, after speaking with the AHEC police, I expressed the concerns about having the police lead something like this it might be triggering for some students. And so the idea that they're going to explain what their role is in an active shooter or harmer situation, it's important that they do that. And I think it's also important, you know, Senna and I have talked about how students will be prepared for this and then able to react, understanding that every move they make is critical and not to be in defense thinking police are doing anything untoward. So it's really important they understand the role in that kind of situation on this campus. I understand a lot of people have had this in high schools, you know, and of course in elementary schools in recent years. However, it's different in this downtown atmosphere um, as we're an open area, you know, to so many activities around and we're at risk. And so it's really important that we have this training event. And I believe if you'll excuse my personal opinion, I would really like us all to take part in this. They need a minimum of 10 people. And yes, it's an hour and a half for this. What the hope is and what Dean Tackett had, had you know, assured us 
is they have some budget to put toward this, but we'd like it to be a regular, a regularly occurring event at orientation or during that first week or two of, of school. And in conjunction, we would work with the Restorative Justice Committee to bring a de-escalation training as well. So although the training with what I've asked them to add about the role of police so as to assuage any fears or worries about that, the hour and a half will be for us, but then the hope is that we could then condense, after we've taken part in this, we're able to talk about it knowledgeably and then ask to condense it to an hour. So then we have, again, that same week, it follows whether it's that week or the next for the de-escalation. And these two things I feel, and you all agreed when we talked about a safety event, are really important for our student body to understand, to know how they can stay safe. So I had put in the email that we would try to bookend our meeting because of the hour and a half where we'd take maybe 30 minutes of the meeting either at the start or the end and then an hour on either side of that. And that was offered to us on the 20th, but I know Kristen said she's the only one that responded that said she couldn't do that date. So I would like to ask that you think about this. I don't know if we can get everybody's answers, you know, right now, but maybe I can get Matt to help me do a poll and then we can get some dates and some time choices, whether before or after. That's all I wanted you to know. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Will and then me. Thank you, Ree. Um, I just want to make a real quick statement about this to the council and everyone present that the safety of the students is one of my type top priorities and it's one of the things I ran with. Um, and with that, that that can look differently for everyone, of course, but I think that we should at least give this a chance to see if this is the right path forward. Thank you. And then I just wanted to um, say that I apologize for not responding to this email. Um, unfortunately, I think it got lost in the stack, but I do support this idea um, and would we'll love to try and uh, work and make a survey or like when to meet kind of thing to see if we can make it happen next week is what we're looking at. Okay. But we want to do it this term. Yeah. So and Dave asked about a virtual option too, so I will find that. Okay. Well, I'll coordinate with you and we'll work towards something on figuring that out. Is there anything else you wanted to add to the your topic thing? No. Nope. All right. That's it for me. Um, so on the new business, um, we have the resolution for sustainable fund for Rowdy's Corner, uh, presented Mike, Denny, and Will. So we we had an agreement that I was going to do a new business, but since it's my bill, right? Um, Matt's going to lead the yeah. discussion. I don't know. Um, I think we've read the abstract and they were asked. So I'm going to go straight to the therefore. Um, um, oh, yes. Wait, hold on. What is going on? Uh, Matt, the chair. Right now. Yeah. Alejandro. Um, I just forgot to uh, put my name up there, but I want to make it clear that I do endorse this as well. So. All right. Well, I uh, accept that friendly amendment. Um, I just wanted to state for what is the atmosphere going on, Denny, around everything that I think for the record, it's important that we read this bill. Okay. Sorry. Right. Sorry, Mike have asked me to do it, but yeah, please go ahead. All right. All right. Would you like to read it? We endorse it too. You, I, we accept your friendly amendment. Okay, right. so we'll, we'll read the bill so it's for the record and then we'll move on from there. Yep. So, do I start on abstract? Okay. 
Abstract, the Student Advocacy Council recognizes the growing challenges of food insecurity and its impact on our students' well-being. We honor the legacy of former SGA leader Kyle Haley, who initiated the MSU Denver Food Bank in 2007, later renamed Rowdy's Corner in 2018. With increasing food insecurity stemming from changing climate conditions, political issues, and economic stagnation since 2019, many students require supplemental support for sustenance. Rowdy's Corner has witnessed a surge in demand, providing not only sustenance, but also a warm, safe, and inclusive environment. We are dedicated to addressing student food insecurity and fostering a collaborative solution. Whereas in 2007, SGA leader Kyle Haley proposed the establishment of the Metropolitan State College of Denver Food Bank. Through last year's resolution, Rowdy's Corner has expanded its services and operations to better serve our community. We acknowledge the evolving nature of the situation concerning Rowdy's Corner and the need for a long-term solution. The Student Advocacy Council excuse me, is committed to eliminating food, student food insecurity on our campus. We stand united in supporting Rowdy's Corner and any efforts to combat food insecurity. Therefore, be it hereby resolved, the Student Advocacy Council will allocate 10,000 total in two separate instances. 2,000 will be allocated from the Green Purchasing Fund. B, 6,000 will be allocated from the Events Fund. C, 2,000 will be allocated from the Office Supplies Fund. An initial 5,000 is to be donated on October 16 in recognition of World Food Day and our commitment to addressing food insecurity at our university. The second amount of 5,000 is to be donated the second week of the spring semester. Between the, the two donations, the student, student Advocacy Council will continue to collaborate and hold the university accountable to identify and resolve issues facing Rowdy's Corner. Furthermore, TSAC will pursue partnerships with retail grocery stores and restaurants to acquire donations specifically for Rowdy's Corner. Additionally, if the administration is unable to come to an agreement as to sustainable funding by midterms of spring semester, TSAC will donate an additional $5,000 and ask the university to match this donation. The student government of MSU will organize an event in, col in collaboration with Rowdy's Corner to promote SNAP and other available resources in the Denver metro area including Metro Caring, Denver Food Pantry, and donation-based restaurants. The council will actively work with Rowdy's Corner to pursue grants and new partnerships. Given the past question about how we're going to follow through with this, um, I've worked in the, uh, the Denver Metro Area's restaurants for a really long time, about 10 years. Um, and I have two managers that are working, uh, one in Union Station and one, I believe, is in Tennyson. Um, and they're working with uh, their superiors to fund, uh, to come up with events to help us. Additionally, uh, one of our caterers here at MSU, Cart Cartucho Concepts, they, um, Chef Edwin has also agreed to help me uh, or help us out to either donate food or create a donation event. Um, and he's more than happy to help. So I just want to address that we are working on this. And uh, some of us are like very taking this very, very seriously. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. I want to add to Denny's comments there that again, the PR committee is working on a campaign to advertise for students about the Kroger program that, again, when you swipe your King Supers card, it'll donate money to the food pantry, which will add no extra cost to students, but give them availability to try and get money back to the food pantry. And I've been also working with um, different departments, administrators, um, and looking at different types of grants that work on for the longer term picture and supporting Rowdy's Corner. Well, 
I'd like to propose one friendly amendment to the resolution, and that being that there was a, I want there to be language in this bill regarding the oversight of the budget committee. I see. Um, okay. He, he, uh, I think he wants us to allocate in the very first point. Uh, he wants us to say, uh, with oversight of the budget committee, the Student Advocacy Council will allocate 10000 Yes? Just uh, not specifically there, but somewhere in this bill that says that there was oversight from the budget committee. I want everything to be in writing. Yes, exactly. Mike, it might be worth also requesting because when we did do our resolution last year for this, we did specifically say, hey, right each corner, um, you need to send us an itemized sheet of the purchases that y'all use these funds towards for transparency reasons for us. Um, it might be worth putting that in there and then requesting that 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 uh, itemized sheet at some point soon. Because we, uh, as budget chair last year, I never received that. So you're proposing that as a friendly amendment? Yeah. I'll second that. I second that too. Um, let's. Yeah, nine. Wait, can I motion to vote on it? Yes, let's. Vote. Yeah, I do that. I do Thank that. you. Oh, I second that. Okay, cool. Yes. Point nine about oversight. We should real quickly add that point. Yeah, before voting. Okay. With oversight of the budget committee and request of, or something like that. <clears throat> With oversight of the budget committee and request of an itemized. List of expenses for past for past in uh, present donation. I would like to. I would like to add um, yes with oversight of the budget committee and um, list of expenses um, somewhere in there that uh, the the money is to be used for uh, food purchase only. So the, the Rowdy's Corner can use the money to purchase food to feed students. Does that make, does that make sense? Do you have? Mike? Yes, so um, I'd say um, I have item 10, it should be this <clears throat> donation <clears throat> is to be used for food only. Um, I know they're having some staffing errors as well. Um, that is a university problem. That is not a problem that student government. We, we don't we don't fund departments on this campus. We, we we do donations to food, so that's why. So the purchase of food, food only. Yes. Three. I I don't know about making them come up with past itemized list. Can we just start from present and going forward? Sure, that's fine. Okay. Did you have something to add, Alejandro? All right. So if we're all in agreement, I would make a motion to vote. He made a motion. Well, let's go back. to motion for something for once. <laughs> I, well, I second it. I'll let, I'll let you make the motion. <laughs> one time. <Damn. laughs> um, so for voting, uh, we want to do it by individual. Um, we'll start right here. Yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. 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 Online. Gabe. Aye. John. Aye. And Kristen, I think, dropped out earlier, um, but we make quorum, so passes unanimously. Hey. Come on. 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 Come on.
Hey. Hey, I wrote most of this bill. <laughs> Sit down. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. I want to thank everybody today. Um, we did kind of fall behind here and there, but we wrapped it up in a timely fashion. Um, so at this point, I would make a motion. Oh, Dr. Brown? Sorry, before you adjourn the meeting. Um, I just want to, in response to passing of this bill, can we please, please, please make sure that we are communicating with the appropriate university leadership, at, whether that's, I don't know, whoever will, whether it's me, whether it's uh, Armando in terms of the transfer of funds, whether it's um, those who oversee the food pantry that we're communicating and collaborating and that we're working on this together and making sure that we're clear on communication because this has been really messy in terms of us getting to this point. So I appreciate what just happened. So can we just make sure we're doing that um, as we continue to move forward with university administration as well? Please. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I think we're good, Matt. If you want to adjourn. I motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. second. No, you mean you want a second? No, okay. We want a second. <laughs> 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 All right. Meeting adjourned.